How you doing? This is Coach DiCarlo. Today we're going to be talking about three specific steps to manifest anything. This is going to actually be a talk by Dr. L.W. DeLawrence. L.W. DeLawrence was so powerful in his time that his books were banned in the Caribbean islands because they had so much power. So what we're going to do is share some of his techniques that will allow you to begin manifesting the life that you desire. This series that I'm doing is 1,000 Masters. And why do I call it 1,000 Masters? I'm going to be coming from the various teachings of various masters and what they taught about manifestation. So beyond Neville Goddard, you're going to be getting people like Dr. L.W. DeLawrence and other mystical teachers that taught us how to manifest, but many of their words have been forgotten simply just because of time. So today we're going to be talking about three specific steps to manifest anything. The three specific occult steps. There are but three steps involved in the act of withdrawing from the sense plane material world and entering into communications with things of either the psychic world or the spiritual plane. And they are so simple that the humblest intellect can comprehend them. He says, listen, there's three basic steps to manifesting anything and begin moving from what we call the physical world to the psychic slash spiritual world. I've discovered three steps that will allow you to get anything you want if you understand how these steps work and where you can begin communicating with the spiritual world slash psychic world. And he says they're so simple that Basically, even a child can understand them. The first specific occult step is this. The first is to bring activities of the personal ego into absolute stillness. By diverting or withdrawing the attention and thought from everything relating to things for the sense life and center them upon the specific object chosen for interior contemplation. Upon first hearing that, that's going to sound somewhat like a foreign language, but let me clarify. He says, first, is to bring activities of the personal ego into absolute stillness. Now, Mr. Lindell has said this for the last couple of years, you must enter into the silence. So he's really just confirming what Dr. L.W. DeLawrence has basically stated here, going into the silence. By diverting or withdrawing your attention and thoughts from everything related to things for the sense life and centering them upon the specific object chosen for interior contemplation, whatever you focus on has your life. He says, so what you have to do is withdraw your attention from that thing that you're focused on and begin setting your attention on what it is you want to manifest. Don't focus on the sense life. Don't worry about the without. Center your attention upon a specific object chosen for interior contemplation. Set your mind on what it is that you want to focus on. Once you begin setting your attention on that thought, that single thought, don't allow your thoughts to be scattered. It is said that the double-minded person is unstable in all of his or her ways, and they should not believe that they're going to receive anything from the Lord. Uh, again, I often call the Lord the law of right decree. In this moment of decreeing what it is that you want, give this thing your specific attention. When you go into your quiet place, meditate upon that thing, that ideal, that thing that you want to manifest in your life, and give your attention in the silence to that single object. You keep ego out because ego wants to tell you how you're going to manifest it or why it can't be done. He says, you got to relieve yourself from the personality of the ego and you must get still. Your job is not to worry about the how. Your job is to see it as already done when you enter into the silence. That's the first step. The second specific occult step. The second is to empty the mind also of everything related to self-interest and to lay down all pre-impressions 
prejudgments, and personal predelegations, that the mind may be a perfect blank on which the truth, undisturbed or unobstructed by the bias of prejudice or personal desire, may write its own story. He says, second is to empty the mind also of everything related to self-interest. Again, this is closing the door on ego and laying down all pre-impressions, pre-judgments, and personal predelegations, that the mind may be a perfect blank on which the truth, undisturbed or unobstructed by the bias of prejudice or personal desires, may write its own story. If you go in already with the answer, you know, many times we're talking to somebody and they share something with us and we say, I know that. When you say, I know that, you basically shed off the ability to learn because you've already got a prejudgment, a pre-impression. With these in mind, your mind stops thinking because you already know the answer. He says, when you go into your quiet place, he says, you got to leave self-interest. If you want the answer, you have to leave self-interest outside the door. You know, Jesus says, close the door, enter your closet and close the door. You got to leave what you believe to be the answer outside. You go into the silence and you allow your mind to be a blank slate with the thing that you seek to manifest. Whatever that thing is, you go in there with the thing, not, not the how, that's not your business. A lot of times when I'm meditating upon something or I read something and I want to go into the silence. Because I don't know the answer, I don't go presupposing that I already have the answer. I go with my mind being a blank slate, just meditating upon that scripture, that ideal, that concept, that relationship. Whatever it is that I want to manifest in the silence, I take that and I place it on the altar of my mind and I begin to let subconscious mind, divine mind, begin to give me an answer. Now, the funny thing is, sometimes I don't immediately walk away with the answer after coming up out of the silence. But what happens is, over a course of time, after planting the seed in the silence, I may be doing something that has nothing to do with what it was I was thinking about, and all of a sudden, the revelation will come to me. It will come as this flash or this insight, and I'm like, this aha moment, you know. And so then I realize that I have the answer that I was seeking. So I'll take and jot it down or I'll record it on my smartphone, but I'll lock that answer in, and then I'll begin meditating upon the answer that was given. But I don't go into the silence pre-knowing, presupposing that I already have the answer. He says, and when you go into the silence, undisturbed, unobstructed by biases of your own prejudice or personal desires, then in the silence, your mind, your subconscious mind will write a story of his own. But you can't go in knowing the answer. The third specific occult step. The third is to firmly hold the mind in this unbiased, receptive attitude upon the object in full expectation of thus receiving the desired truth. He said the third step, when you go into this silence, when you go in and enter your closet, firmly hold the ideal. What is it that you want to do, be, or have? Hold this in mind. Do so unbiasedly with a receptive attitude. Be open to receiving what the spirit what subconscious mind is going to give to you. It says, have an attitude of being willing to receive the answer. The third is to firmly hold the mind in this unbiased, receptive attitude upon the objective, upon the object, in full expectation of thus receiving the desired truth or answer. So, Depending upon what it is that you want, when you go into the silence, you hold firmly your attention on that single ideal, whatever it is, and you meditate upon that single ideal 
with an attitude of expecting an answer. Matter of fact, he says, in full expectation of thus receiving the desired truth. When you go in with this mindset, your answer is certain. And like I said, the thing about the answer, it doesn't always come when I leave the silence. Sometimes, like I said, I'll leave the silence still meditating upon what it was that I was seeking. But what happens is, as I'm going about my day and not thinking about, as it were, the answer, the answer is given. Sometimes it happens in the early morning hours. Sometimes it happens while I'm sleeping. I'll wake up with the answer. But the second you've planted the seed of this new ideal, this new concept, this new relationship, whatever it is that you want, it says that that answer will be given to you over a course of time. And let me give you an example. It was said of Daniel, when Daniel was praying for the freedom of Israel, when they were in captivity, an angel was dispatched to him. And he said, Daniel, the moment you begun to pray, the answer was being dispatched, but I was delayed. Just because your answer is delayed doesn't mean that it's a no. It just means that it simply has been delayed. I like to say that universe God always answers with a yes. Y-E-S. I'm going to use the acronym of Y-E-S for our answer. First answer is yes. God answers immediately with that yes. Secondly, he answers eventually. The thing that you're seeking, even though it may not be happening immediately, God says that he's answering that prayer eventually. So it says, though the vision tarries, wait for it, says God will not delay or be late. Understand that divine intelligence time is not always our time. Lastly, in the YES acronym is S, and S stands for not the thing that you were praying for exactly, but something better. A lot of times, universe wants to bless us with more than we can ask, think, and or imagine. So we may see a job just making, let's say, a few dollars an hour, and the universe wants to bless us with so much more. It wants to bless us with opportunity and maybe even creating our own business. So whatever it is that you're asking for, understand that the universe answers in three ways. Why? Yes. That's an immediate yes. E, eventually. Not now, but eventually. Lastly, S, something better. So don't get discouraged when you go into the silence and you don't readily seem to get your answer because the answer is actually being dispatched and on its way. And like I said, creators, what I want to do is a series called 1,000 Masters. And the 1,000 Masters is basically me pulling from different teachers, different masters, and giving you techniques that will allow you to expedite to improve your life. The other thing that I want to do is also, for those who are interested, I'm about ready to start offering a 12-month group coaching package. And what this will do is allow you to be poured into each month. Each month, we'll get on a call. Each month, you'll have things poured into you. Also, what you'll have is access to me. And a lot of times on those calls, we may even be able to bring Mr. Lindo if he's available. You're not going to be just hearing from me. You're going to be hearing from the legend himself. But like I said, this is going to be like a 12-month program for those who are interested. And if you're interested in the 12-month program, go to CoachDiCarlo1 at gmail.com. Say, Coach, I'm interested in the 12-month program. Can I find out more? And we'll talk more about that. As far as the YouTube channel and as well as the Facebook group and Instagram and so forth, I'm going to be putting something out there, like I said, each month concerning the 1,000 Masters. And the whole point of that is helping you grow in your manifestation process. You know, as you tend to learn things about manifestation and you grow and you outgrow, we want to give you the tools to do that. So you'll be able to come out to YouTube as we put these new videos out there and learn from them and grow and apply them to your own life. But like I said, if you're interested in becoming a part of the 12-month coaching package, because of my own time, you know, I only can allow so many people into that program. But if you're interested, reach out to me and see if you qualify. And for those who don't, you still can get the free programs that are going to be out there on YouTube. And 
I'll put those out there, of course, in the Facebook group as well. But again, for those who may be interested in the 12-month coaching package, reach out to me and get more information. But like I said, space is limited, so I have to be mindful, and I want to make sure that I get people that want to grow and stick with the package and stick with the program and to take their life to whatever level they want to take it to. I can't even determine the individual's level. They must determine that. But I know that you'll get a lot, and you'll take tools away from the 12-month program that will allow you to transform your life, your business, your health, whatever it is that you want to change, improve upon, this 12-month package is going to allow you to do that. Again, this is Coach DiCarlo and saying this, that only you can create your perfect world, not God or man. Only you can create your perfect world. This is Coach DiCarlo saying have a great and abundant day.